Yes, yesterday we were discussing about uh, what we can discover for a simple, from a simple scatter plot. It is interesting because we have uh, some notion, new notion for you, the notion of outliers, something that is far from the rest of the data. The possibility of getting some patterns like this, or cluster, or high density. And this is the typical visual activity that you perform when you are expecting a visualization. You have an overview of the data. This is a very simple visualization. And you start to get to make sense of the data. And of course, you need the interaction to better explore the data. You need the pop-up window with additional information, blah, 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 what you said yesterday. But this is the basic idea, visually. And uh, I referred in the following, this kind of reasoning, like this uh, is a set of parcels that are using the same uh, M, the same box with different content uh, and so varying uh, weight as an insight. Insight is a scoperta, something new that you discard looking at the data. And I stress again the point that this kind of uh, discovery this insight are not so easy to being to be obtained by automatic analysis because you don't know exactly what to ask for automatic analysis is very good in getting the outliers i do agree and also patterns like cluster but this kind of point it is very far from any standard activity Automated, automated analysis. Okay, I think you've got that. Oh, I remember to remote people that you can, you can uh, raise questions, of course. And um, next point, what you cannot discover from it. We have, we have plotted all the data here and I am claiming that some information has been lost. Do you have a clue about that? What, what, what is wrong here? Think a moment about that. What you cannot see here? What is missing here? Sorry? No, it's not missing, but it's not visible. What can you see inside here? This part is so crowded, so overplotted, that you just distinguish that here there is higher density. Maybe that you see some pattern in this direction, but most of the information is hidden. Why? Because the resolution of the screen is finite. A pixel has a fixed dimension. And you have a collision for rounding issues. Several points, several parses have been be plotted on the same pixel. And you can argue, okay, but I can have a bigger screen. I can have a higher resolution. I do agree. But I can have, uh, instead of 200,000 items, I can have 200 millions of items. And the problem will rise again. Of course, uh, having a, bit, a, a bigger screen and a better solution uh, mitigates the problem, but don't solve it. So we are dealing now with this example to make you aware of the problem that we have. With a visualization is not just visualizing stuff is also taking care of the quality of the visualization. Let me explain uh, this point with some research that uh, I did a long time ago with uh, Enrico Bertini, a PhD student of mine. Now he is a professor at the New York University. What is the point? This one that you see is an eight 
by eight pixel matrix. Each square is representing a single pixel on the screen. Is a zoom. These white dots are real data, parcel. And in this pixel, we have one parcel. So the pixel has been turned on, it's blue. Here, we have two pixels that are empty, empty, empty. So this is black. This is the encoding. And here we have three parcels that for rounding issues are on the same pixel, of course. And the, here we have five, six, seven. Is that a question? Okay. Thank you. And uh, here we have uh, many parcels on the same pixel. Hmm? And uh, if you are using uh, this encoding, uh, black and white, we can only represent uh, there is an element in the pixel, one or one million is the same, or no element in it. And this is the reason why here is always black. So we can try to improve the story. And this is a standard techniques, a technique in, 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 in InfoVis. It is called the density map. Instead of mapping a, a pixel to black and white, you map it to a gray a scale of color or a gray scale, depending on how many pixels, how many, so sorry, how many parcels have been plotted on that pixel. So if you have uh, this, this scale is an interesting example uh, because uh, it is not a rainbow scale. Uh, I will discuss colors uh, in other classes, but uh, this scale is intended to provide an increasing brightness. You should perceive uh, here on, 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 the, on, on the screen is not very good, but uh, if you look at the slide that you have already have on, on, uh, on the classroom, this is brighter than this, this is brighter than this, and, and so on. This is a good idea to provide the perception of, of increasing numerical values. So yellow pixels will be pixel crowded with a lot of, of elements inside, while green pixels are representing a, a few elements. Hmm? Black means nothing, or white if you are thinking in the other way around. So this is the idea. And this is standard. You will see that the D3, the software that you will learn in these classes, uh, automatically provide for this kind of mapping. And uh, the problem is that the densities of the points of the pixel is not uh, linear. Typically, it's random. You can see the same data set. This is high resolution. You, you can see that, that there is a pattern here. Hmm? But as I said before, high resolution is not infinite. So sooner or later, you, you will have the problem. In the end, there is the distribution of frequency of, of, of the pixel. There are, let's say, I don't read very well here, 2,000 pixels in which there is only one pass. There are, uh, let's say, uh, 300, I don't, I don't read the scale. No, this is not, this is not, sorry, this is uh, 8,000, 8, hmm? 8, pixels with one, one parcel inside. 4,000 with two parcel inside, 2,000 with three. You can see very quickly the number of pixels having a few items decrease. And here, there is a, very far away, one, one single pixel that has inside hundreds of, of a parcel inside. This is obvious, is in this zone. Pixels are very crowded. And uh, you have a problem, mapping problem. Here I have 126 different data densities, totally nonlinear, you can see the decreasing. 
Very often you have, you have some outliers here, one pixel with the thousands of collision inside. And you have only available, let's say, 256 colors. You are not using the, the full resolution of the scale. You want that colors are separable. You want that the end user perceive clearly the difference. If you have two colors that you cannot distinguish, they are not useful in this context. So let's say you have only 250 colors. So we have 126 data densities, 255 colors. You needed the background, of course. And the problem is how to map it. Uh, what is the mapping between them? How, how do you map this the density value to the color code? The simplest solution is to go for a linear mapping. This is the transfer function, it is linear. Hmm? You can go for a min max normalization. I, I assume that you're familiar with that. There are there is a family of normalizations around them, huh? zeta normalization, min max normalization. And this is the result. It's not really exciting, so we cannot see anything here. It is really it's much better for people at home. But trust me, or if you have the copy on your hmm, equipment, you can see the original picture. Most of the pixels are green. Why? Because you see that there is a, a high part of them that uh, they are dominating the situation. Hmm? If, you had, if you consider the max, the max is an outlier. And uh, in this color scale, you can perceive here, maybe you see a, a pixel that is a little bit, I get the, is yellow. This is the pixel very crowded. Another point is here but you don't perceive anything. So, me, me and Enrico Bertini worked on a different kind of mapping that were not um, linear. The idea is to use a, a still reduced color scale, only 15 values instead of 250, more separable, and instead, that if you have only 15 colors, it means that if you have 126 densities, 15 colors, you will have collision on the colors. The same different densities will go on the same color. Fine with me. And we, had, we got this interesting idea, and I will show you why it is interesting. We published the paper, is to fill uh, the color in a uniform way, having the number of pixels dark green, the number of pixels light green, till uh, blah, 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 the number of pixels yellow, full yellow, being the same. We are distorting the reality. It's a distortion, it's not linear. It's, it's, a, it's a distortion, a distorted, it's, it's something like this. Hmm? And this is the result. Maybe you cannot appreciate the, the, the color one, but now we have a much better idea of what we can say. You, 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 can, you can discover, I see a stick here for room to people. You can see inside the dark zone, you can recognize a very high part. And here you recognize the, the, dense, the, the densest areas. There is one area here and one area here. This is expected because here we have a very little parcel, very light parcel. There are most of them. From some computation, we, we come up with about 95%, I don't remember, something that 95% of the data is here, out of 200,000. If you go in the postal market, you, you see parcel are like this easily. Hmm? A big parcel like this, like the table, is a very, very, very seldom. But there are also other strange patterns. Here there is a cluster, full yellow. Hmm? Having a, so here we have a lot of collision, a lot of parcel is here. And here there is a trend. Someone yesterday said that there is a correlation between the weight and the, and the volume. 
I, I not fully agree with that. Yeah, there is something that is a correlation hmm? somehow. The, 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 the larger the box, the higher the weight of, of, of the parcel, but it's only here. The rest is, is, a, is a, uh, spread around. And this is a simple example. You see other cluster here. You can see both in the black and white and color scheme. So this idea, we have, we have an algorithm doing that. We did a lot of studies of metrics, and we come up with a solution. And we demonstrated that our solution outperforms the, the simple mapping, but also other, uh, there is something that is called the histogram equalization that is used in, in color picture that improves the story. I will give you a talk only on this except in a larger scale than today. But I want to show you that you can work, hard working to improve the quality of the image. So visualization is not only just take the data and put it in, in some visualization. It's also try to preserve the original value in what you see. There is a, a concept by Taft, a pioneer of InfoVis, that he defined the lie factor, how much the visualization is going to alterate the, the data values by chance, by purpose, and so on. Or how much information is hidden. In this case, the problem is that this visualization is hiding data. The density here is, is uh, hiding to the user. With a, a different mapping, you can rescue some of this information. We can improve, we don't solve the problem, but I can claim that this is much better than what we saw before. And I, I forget that there's a lot of people around. This is better, of course, than this and then this. This, this is a, a good example of, this is a, a, a representation of the data. And this is a, a way to overcome the limitation of the screen. In this case, the limitation is the size of the pixel. Then the map is improving and a different mapping improves the data as well. And this, it is not an easy task. We use the uh, month of work to discover what is the better mapping out to model the quality of the blah, 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 blah. I will talk about that, but not now. So I think that that convinces you that the visualizing stuff, even a simple, very simple scatter plot, is not an easy task. As people, I, we did that uh, maybe 20 years ago, something like that, 15. People are still do, doing research to improve the, the cluttering image. We are experimenting an increasing number of elements to deal with. The, 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 the internet is full of data, large data set. And the problem of collision is still a big problem to scale with the data. And people are still uh, reasoning how to improve the quality of the visualization. For a given uh, way of representing the data, how to improve its quality. Back into the general discussion, we are still working on a definition, if you remember. This uh, was about abstract data. I have introduced here the notion of abstract data. Hmm? And I take a parenthesis to show what you can see, what you cannot see inside. And of course, we can have a mixed visualization in which we have uh, real data, geographical data on the bottom. But here we are linking logical connection. This is the backbone on the internet in 93 in the uh, USA. And we are encoding the traffic with the intensity of the color. So very often you are combining uh, upside data visualization with the real data visualization. Maybe that is the, yes, a geographical map, 
but if I, if I was able to see the some blood quality, you can map the blood quality in my body with different colors. So you can mix uh, APSA data with the real data. So there is something in the intersection. In, in, uh, scientific visualization, information visualization, they are not totally split away. This is the point. Infovis is, is about, about abstract data. Scientific visa is about the concrete data that has a physical representation. You can have something in the middle. And there is a, the general trend of data visualization. We are here, Infovis. And backing to the definition from CARD and other people, it is about uh, Absadeza, it amplifies cognition. What does it mean, amplify cognition? You are smarter, you are faster. You can discover something that you will never discover in another way. Or you can discover something very quickly. Why? Because our highs involve the highest bandwidth we have. The number of bits that your highs are able to process are several order of magnitude higher than uh, other sense. Listening and reading, how many words can you catch per second? Few. How many pixels can you get in your eyes? Millions. And, and there is a, it, it is fast, it is parallel. Uh, and uh, you can recognize very quickly pattern when I will discuss the perceptual stuff, I will show you how we are very good at recognizing, in recognizing shapes. And there are something, some things that are pre-attentive. I will give you an example, something that you can, you can perceive in tenth of a second without thinking. And you can extend your memory. You can do something that is more complex. You are taking notes. This is a prosthetic activity to your memory. You can use notes for remembering what you heard here. This is the notion of uh, amplified cognition. And people think visually. In, in a lot of languages, I see means I understand. Also in Italian, vedo is used to say ho capito. And that, that amplifies the cognition faster and behind your capacity. There are two different things. You can go faster. And in other cases, you can reach some results that you never reach in other way. For instance, discover this pattern looking to the numerical data is something that you will never get. Hmm? And I have some very simple example. Just for fun, try to multiply a mente in your head 35 by 95. Rise and end when, when you are done. Calculators are killing our brains, however. Hmm? A lot of time. Hmm? You can use some trick, 95, I, I go for 95 is more or less 100. And uh, well, I'm missing 5% and, and I can recover the, the, the result. But it takes time as well. Now do that uh, using paper or your computer or, or, or whatever. Do that, please. Just, 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 maybe if you remember how to do that uh, manually. Okay, I assume you are done, more or less. Hmm?
Okay, I think that you got the point. Uh, typically, people using uh, a visual uh, help, like pencil and paper, are five times faster than without. And you. So, in this case, using a visual means, a visual height, they make you faster. But if I ask you to multiply, let's say, 3,500,000 with 25 by 400,000, you will never succeed by your brain. Hmm? That is the meaning of uh, amplify cognition. Faster or discovering something that you will never discover. And the, the example, the number is very simple. Hmm? It's very convincing. But let's go for a other example. Now, here we have some data about the United States. Hmm? It's not a lot of data, 50 tuples, something like that. For each state, you have two numbers. The percentage of people that get a degree, and this is so the destruction, the, 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 how many people uh, went to the college, 20%, 20%, 27%, and so on. And here we have the, the money, the income per year. Hmm? What is the salary in that country? This is the data, not complex. Not, we don't need the uh, visual analytics. We don't need the data mining. You, you can easily see this one. But I have uh, three simple questions for you. Very simple questions. Which one is the state that uh, has the highest college degree? The maximum of, of the uh, instruction? And the highest income, the richest, with more money. You have to go to all the 50 tables, one by one, and remember the maximum. It takes time. And they ask you another question. Is there any relationship between the college and percentage and income? There is a correlation among them. Mm. Doing that on, 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 on these figures is not so easy. It, it is very hard that you can, you can come up with a, a sound answer for that. The maximum is possible. You go to them and you get the maximum. If instead of being 50, there were 5 million, it would take months. If I go for a scatter plot, you quickly get the highest degree, you get the highest money, maximum in X and Y. And this shape clearly suggests a correlation. Hmm? The higher the money, the higher the college degree. It makes sense. Hmm? You have the money to send your child to the school to pay the, the fee. So this is something that speed up the, the story. It's much, we, we discussed it before with, with the parts, and this is still a, a scatter plot. Hmm? And each point is just representing two pieces of information, percentage of degree uh, per capita income. And you can easily get the maximum, minimum, you can get outliers. For instance, here there is an outlier. Let that talk just a little bit of that. Why in Nevada? They have a reasonable quantity of money, but they are well below other countries. In Nevada, having more money is not directly connected with the percentage of college degree. And that is something that you will never easily get from here. Or there are some uh, the other way around in Vermont, even if they are really poor with respect to the other, I'm joking. They have very high percentage of degree. They like to spend the money for sending people to school. In Nevada, they are way around. So I think that that make clear the story 
amplify cognition. It's not just a, a, a publicity, no? It's something that is real. Visualization amplify cognition. You go faster and discover something that you cannot discover. But you need to be very careful in doing your job. Do not just visualize the story without thinking. And okay, someone say, okay, I don't trust you, professor. You're boring me with the story of visualization. I am a very strong statistical person. I know all, everything about uh, mean variance, covariance, uh, quartile, uh, or whatever. Give me your data. I go for doing some statistical analysis. I will get a liar trend, the correlation, personal correlation. You can compute that in a very quick way. And uh, they see there is a person, as Combs, that uh, provides this example. What is this example? We have four data set, four samples of 15 elements. One, two, three, four. And if you use statistics, you get the same linear model. The mean is 7.5 for all of them. The variance is exactly the same for all of them. Till the third element, exactly. One, one, one by thousand of precision. And the same for correlation. So according to statistics, these four samples, are perfectly the same. Can you figure out uh, what is the difference among them? If you look to the data, hmm, in this case, there is the X that this is still 8888. This is very strange, it's different from the other. But what how the data is, is, is in reality? And I don't I cannot use this information, it's not usable at all. You can go to analyze the data. Maybe you perceive the fourth as a very hot, that you can have an intuition of the data distribution. But if you go here, you don't come up with a quick understanding. Are, are they the same? No. They differ, yes. In which way? This is quite evident. This is one, two, three, four. The same correlation, the same mean, the same variance, but the shape is totally different. This is what the, the linear model, I don't know what, what, what can you imagine reading this data, but each time you have a, a couple of statistical picture, uh, a statistical figures, sorry, think of this example. I don't say that this, this is not important. I say that this is a, a summarization. You are losing information. And this information is still uh, presented to visual. OK. And uh, there is another thing I said there. Here I did some claim, fast, parallel, pre-attentive. OK, I'll give you a demonstration for that. Now, I will present on the screen uh, several numbers. And I wanted that you count how many trees are around, how many times the the, the tree appears on the screen. Are you ready? Four seconds for that. I think that no one was able to get that. You can argue, okay, four seconds are not enough. I need more time. No, you need a better encoding. You can solve the problem in one tenth of a second. Are you ready? No, you cannot that here. If you look at my screen, 
remote is good, getting that better. This is a good, a bad problem. If you encode the, the tree with the red, you perceive, you, if you have the slide, you can try that. The, yeah, the difference in color of red is not enough to, to raise your, your attention. If, if it, the tree are in red, you perceive the tree, the tree trees in a one tenth of a second. Because color is, and I believe your privacy, because from, from out they, they saw your faces, but you're the, the mask. So it's a problem of encoding. Using the correct encoding can speed up a lot your perception. And we discuss that later on. Color is pretty attentive. You don't waste your, ma your mind. There is no effort in doing that. And that is really boring me that a lot of these issues are perfectly clear. You can read them on the books and teaching them by ears. And most of people still ignore them. The quality of the website, the violation of the basic perception rules are really boring me. So now we can read again this definition. Sorry for being so slow, but I'm defining something. I want to see that you better understand what we have behind this. A lot of, the, okay, this is my preferred definition. Now you know perfectly any part of it. Information visualization is the use of computer supported. Point one, interactive. Point two, visual representation. It is the theory that we give you in other classes of abstract data, not scientific data, to amplify cognition. Now you are perfectly clear what amplify cognition means. It's not buzzword, it's not a, a, a political talk, it is reality. And to make this real, you need to know all the issues that are behind, the techniques, the visualization, the perception, and so on. And this is, it is a large part of the goal of this course. And uh, I detailed each of the, that part in a, with a lot of uh, discussion and examples. Okay, let's go to try to put uh, the technique in the right context. InfoVis is very good when, when you want to explore the data. When, when you don't know what you're looking at, to discover something, and uh, also to support decisions. Of course, there, is a, there are other approach, statistics, but statistics uh, give you a stronger verification, but does not support exploration. If I give you the, the mean or the and uh, if you use data mining, remember the example that I showed you before. Just come as quartet is a very good example for that. Data mining is very good. You are familiar with it, I think. Mm. Uh, but it's a, better, a black box. And the uh, the style of the, of the analysis, questions, response. You have an hypothesis, you verify your hypothesis. If you don't know what to do, InfoVis is better. But uh, both uh, InfoVis and statistical approach are good. The idea is that uh, visual analytics that initially has been called the visual data mining, is try to put this word together. No one is the winner, you need both of them. This is the basic idea. 
So, concluding this part, I said that, that the visualization uh, can be used for three reasons, but basically there are two. In, uh, in purple, when you don't know, you don't know the data. So you analyze the data, you support the data, you discover the data. Or you know, green part. So you explain the story, you describe the story, or you take or make a decision on what you know, like the map of the underground. So when you don't know, and when you know. This is the in my mind the, the best way of thinking. And when you're talking about uh, when you know, I see a difference in explaining, teaching, describing, and making decisions. Because uh, here we have all the time of the world. Hmm? As a professor, I use my time to convey the information to you to the best of my knowledge. Hmm? If I have to take a decision, make a decision, and they're looking for the escaping from a, a burning uh, uh, room, I am uh, short in time. My making decision may be uh, somehow pressing uh, and more complex. So in this case, you need uh, to help the user with something more. In, instead of explaining, you can take it, and you have, you have the example here. Hmm? This is, can be explained, this, this can be explained, this is some user to make a decision. If you're related to an important meeting, using this map may be, make, make you anxious in some way. And now let's go to what is behind the influence. The first step is to take the data and provide an internal representation. I take the, I use the, the example that we know now, I take my data is, are the postal parcels by Dodge sent in Italy. And my internal representation is a scatter plot. But in this step, I have to consider the variability in the data. We can have uh, data with one single value, two values, three values. And these steps somehow corresponds to the way in which human beings perceive the reality. You can go online, plane, like scatter plot, or three-dimensional visualization that are not, not the best, I will discuss that later, but at least they are familiar with human beings. If you move to multidimensional data, five, seven, eight, 20 attributes, you will never come up with a mental model for that. So representing multidimensional data is particularly hard. And there are several techniques for that. And uh, you have to encode the data and relations. You have to encode the temporal data. Some, in some cases, the time is very important. You have a, some cases in which we have maps or diagrams, diagram behind. We have some kind of specific uh, structure that are very common, graphs but, and trees. And there is the case in which the data is not constant, but is continuously updated. Data streams of uh, the market uh, value of, of, of some stocks or whatever, they change continuously. And we have a lot of well-designed, agreed, understood technique. One is the scatter plot. Here it is. This is in a reach that we discuss that later. But this is a point is plotted using X and Y. Here we have a three-dimensional scatter plot. And here we have Z, X, and Y. Occlusion pers perspective can make this not so effective, but in any case, you can use it. And we have other visualization. This is a rather diagram that combine uh, several attributes together. 
or we are we have a chart diagram in which uh, this is a radial representation or here we have a, i will discuss each of them carefully because this is the set of solution that you already have uh, in your hand you take the tree you take the snap of code that implement one of these you run your data you are more or less you're done parallel coordinates uh, other rather the radial representation how we discuss them we have a, a set of well-known and understood way of representing the data hmm? internal representation second step once we have the internal representation you have a, a mathematical model a mapping between the data visualization you have to present it to the user and remember there are limitations on the screen perception time and uh, you have to deal with the space limitation this is the, the most uh, uh, relevant one but not the unique one you can go for scrolling this is the simple solution you can have a way to present some detail without losing the overview you can have use distortion i like distortion very often it's very effective the the example we saw before for uh, the color mapping of the scatter plot was used has been done distorting with the using a distortion of the mapping two densities goes on the same color but the design of that makes difference evident when you distort you're using distortion typically you observe more differences but you're not good to estimate the magnitude of the difference but you are, at least you discover here i have more more items than, than here how many more i don't know but without distortion you don't discover the difference at all suppression cut away, cut away some details you can zoom of course you can pan on the screen you can have semantic zoom i will discuss that there are some solution to deal with space limitation uh, sampling is another possibility don't project all the data but only a sample of it and after that we have time limitation how many change can i present to the user before overwhelming him how many images i can see one after the other perceiving the difference and we have a lot of perceptual issues in this model there is no human being behind everything is perfect here there are human eyes observing the image and they perceive the color in different way they have some limitation and there are a sort of, of problems that make you wrong in, in analyze, analyzing the data visually <clears throat> i will show you some example of that and after that, there are cognitive issues, meaning the, the effort needed to making a mental model. And here, I will not go there very deep because uh, I still have the, the, the feeling that uh, this part is very far from being solved. Here, we, we know a lot of stuff, and I will show them. At least uh, you can present a a perceptually safe visualization trying to help the user in modeling the story and reasoning is still far from our capabilities in my opinion and here we have some example just just to give you some ideas very quickly here this is an example of semantic zoom we have some data when you zoom on a data that provides more additional details hmm? here there are some ships and you, if you zoom on a ship you get some pieces of information about the length the weight or whatever semantic zoom means 
Not only I am enlarging the image, but I am adding information on it because I have, I have more room for showing it. Something that I know, but I cannot show initially because the for space limitation problem. Here there is the idea of uh, overview plus detail. Here we have a map and uh, you can zoom on a map, still having the rest of the map behind. So you, you are not lost in the story. Here this is the same idea. This is a sort of underground map and you can zoom on a part having still connection with the rest. Here we are using distortion. We are using the perspective. There is a, some part that you see in linear way and you see some data and some part that is still per perceivable somehow, but this is distorted by perception. Look at this, this is a, oh, you cannot look at this very well. This is using, it's done by using a picture. I have to complain about the quality of this. Uh, projector. Uh, there are pictures from movies. On the center, you have the full picture. And you can see, let's say, 12 movies at a time. And after that, you, you can move on this. You can perceive the image here, perceive the image here. You can move the, the focus your side, getting more information. But still, you have uh, an overview of the data. And yeah, this is a nice idea. It's something that Excel uh, should implement. If you have a very crowded uh, sheet of data, hmm, you cannot perceive on the number. If here we have a numerical number, why don't you represent it with the length of a bar is value? And you can see the, the trend of these values. And you can also have a lens here that put the number in front. So you have all the shape of the data and also the real values of some part. I will be back on all of these examples, but I present them to give you the, the idea. What is a internal representation we saw before? What is the presentation to the user, the possible solution? So we have technique for representation, technique for presentation to the user. And uh, so you can think, okay, the problem has been solved. We have uh, more or less agreed the more or less mature solution around for presenting and representing the data. And uh, all of them are on the on a book. You have a copy of my slides, you can read them, you can. So the problem is solved. But there is a, a problem that is uh, connected to data science and complexity. This is by very, very few values. Mm -hmm. uh, Federal Express uh, handles handle for each day about 100, 100 million of a, a transaction per day. The credit card visa are higher than that. The phone call on at and are 300 million. The number of emails is 50 billion per day. And the number of IP packets per day is 600 billion. And we have 1 trillion, meaning 10 rises to 12 web pages around according to about three petabytes of data. And Google, to maintain the index of this stuff, the credit is going to process every day 20 petabytes of data. And uh, so we have a kilobyte, a megabyte, a gigabyte, a terabyte, a petabyte, and these figures are totally outdated. You can easily multiply by 10 of them. I wrote them several years ago. And uh, we are I'm talking by one hour. I, I, I will, we will have a, a break for the lunch, uh, long break. 
we have four hours, we can do go for four hours of class. And uh, I want to slow down a little bit because I want to discuss this. Uh, we are engineer, you would be, you are already engineer, we'd be engineer with different flavor, but all of you are familiar with the, this prefix, kilo, mega, giga, tera, mm, tera, peta, petabyte. We have to thank uh, informatic because uh, it's very often the case that uh, you use this prefix. In real life, you use mega, giga, but those often, tera is not common, petabyte, peta is maybe in, in astronomy, but they use different uh, units. Hmm? Here, uh, the, the, the Anilusha, your lights, or, or the distance between the Earth and the Sun as a unit. But the, having here selected the byte as a unit, we are going to have this better byte. And a little bit for fun, but not, not, not at all. What is your mental image of a better byte? Uh, okay, you can answer using the maths. Hmm? It is 10 rise to 15. Or uh, I like this example, uh, I move in, in power of two, it's two rise to the fifth. Or you can say it is, it is about 1,000 trillions. But how much is big? Two by 50. I used two by 50. Uh, because the, there was a, a very old joke about the idea of bending a sheet of paper times on, on itself. That is not possible, of course. And uh, if you are able to do that, you will reach, uh, let's say, more than the half the distance between the, the heart and the sun. Hmm? So this is a fast idea of what two power 50 means. Hmm? But in the distance, you can get the, the, the parallel with the sun as an idea. But what is the, the information we're talking about? Here we're talking about information. Hmm? Mails, phone call, uh, IP packets. So we're talking about data visualization. So we, I want to, like to, to understand how many pieces of information are inside. And I did the this joke a long time ago, and I still like it, I present you. I want to like, a, starting with the comparison with one of the most data loss we got hmm? in a, the Alexandria library file, long, long time ago. Hmm? All, the, all the, the paper there have been destroyed by a fire. And the question that arises to myself, how many bytes were lost in that, in that time? Hmm? Of course, we are neglecting the quality. We are, just counting the bytes. And uh, I did this simple calculation. If you go reading to the historical reports of that story, you can assume that more or less uh, there were about 50,000 books. Hmm? They were not books, they are papyri in reality, but let's see. Hmm? That is more or less 2 power 16. And uh, Assuming that each of that book was containing the same characters of uh, Dante Divina Commedia, it is about half a million of characters, you come up to two power rise 19 for a two rise 16, two rise 35, more or less 32 gigabytes of information. It is a, a very thin fraction on, on my laptop or disk. And we are still using the giga here. And in this case, we are a little bit still far away from this pattern. Giga is something that you can, okay. The Alexandria Library with the, the, exager, the exaggeration and the approximation is about the order is giga. And now, what is the actual situation in Alexandria? Now the Alexandria 
library stores millions of books. Two power 20. And incidentally, they have a, a much modern way to extinguish the fire. And uh, how many libraries are in the, in the world? 90,000 in Europe and about half a million, quarter of a million, say, in the rest of the world, roughly speaking. If you multiply all these libraries for all the books they have, millions, and assuming that each of the book is like Divina Commedia, you come up with a result of 128 petabytes. And uh, for sake of simplicity, for reducing the, the computation, there are duplicates around, of course. Hmm? How many copies of Divina Commedia are around or, or whatever? Let's conclude one petabyte of charts. Of course, it's a rough estimation, very rough. But I think that the magnitude of this reasoning is, is quite or less correct. So we can conclude that the one petabyte is representing everything that has been written by human beings in all the history, in all the languages that we have till now. And I think that this, that gives you a better perception of uh, how many bytes are behind in books, behind the petabyte. And remember that uh, Google is possessing 20 petabytes of data per day. Every day, and maybe it's not 20, it's 30, 40, 50. This is all the stuff. So, all uh, this story with this rough calculation to give you an intuition of, of a petabyte, that we have, we have a problem, we have a big problem. Because storing the data is not a real problem. Google has no problem to store the, the data. It's also selling the storage solution. Even the retrieval of a single book is not a, a problem. If you have SQL, Oracle, MySQL, or whatever, you can easily get a single element with a query. The problem is to make sense of the data. To use this data in an effective way. Understanding it discovering pattern inside the trends. I give you a couple of examples using 200,000 elements. If you move to a petabyte of data, it's much, much worse. Making decision without being overwhelmed. And there is a strong understanding, a strong trusting on the fact that the unique solution that works really is visual analytics. I, I totally share this, 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 this point of view. Only automatic calculation is not enough. You can never make sense of petabyte of data using only, only data mining, uh, clustering, or any kind of algorithm you, you can imagine. The other way around, also visualization alone is not enough. Because uh, yes, you, you can get very quickly some insight, but you need some details, more analysis. Is the combination between them, using them in a sequence that produce insights. And this is the target of this course. In the end, the exam, I will give you more information about the exam no, not today, in the next week, luckily. For the exam, you will be requested to build up a visual analytics system. Meaning, I give you the meaning of the, of the exam after we give you the details of the, exam, of the exam. You are going to select some data, large enough. We have some rules for say what is large enough, not billions of data, not, but large enough. And we want, I wanted that you build up a system in which this data is preprocessed offline for removing uh, inconsistencies, whatever. You, you are polishing the data. 
and you will discover that this part is really boring, long, and, and uh, uh, heavy. heavy. Hmm? Once you have this data ready for your analysis, you go for visualize it for having some algorithms of uh, automatic algorithms to run on this data. And you need a system that allow for switching between them. You visualize some data. You can select the data, touching it, isolating some part that is interesting for you. You can run algorithm on it. You have an algorithm, you observe the result back and forth. Of course, with the limitation of what is a, a, an exam at the university. With, so, but I want that you go for having this pattern of uh, interaction working. And you have to discover some insight. Ah, okay, I got this. There is this strange situation here. This is not true or, or, or whatever. And I think, the, and this is my research by years. I am working a lot. Of, I will show you in these classes some solution we developed for uh, information security, for network security, for, for um, network medicine for analyzing the human genome, where the, the complexity of the data is so overwhelming that you need the, a combination of these two. And this is the, the goal of this course, teaching you about uh, visual analytics. The first part will be about visualization, because it is a core point. I will not go very deep in models, but I will stress the dimensionality reduction story how to transform a multidimensional data set, 100 attributes, in something that you can visualize. And here the perspective is quite different from other classes, because in other classes in this, in this faculty, you, 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 you will get an algorithm for preserving information, but not with the final target of visualizing the data. It is different. Maybe that the techniques are the same. Uh, there is principal component analysis, uh, there is the SME. I, I don't know if you are familiar with, with stuff, but I will show part of them with the final goal of uh, um, visualizing it. And this, that will be my main contribute here. And uh, you can add some other algorithms here in your, your exam, having this interleaved. Marco Angelini will take care of teaching you the tree that is for visualizing. I will show you some part in Python for dimensionality reduction. And the rest is up to you for building the system. It's a very practical exam in the end. Visual analytics is uh, involving a lot of uh, point of view. In the core, we have a scientific and information visualization. But around there is a problem of data management. Of course, there is data mining. There is the human beings involved in, in, in the story. Perception and cognition. And there are the, some special data. Special temporal data are very peculiar. There are people that are doing research only in this direction. And uh, if you download, I still uh, I'm missing to, I missed to put the link there, I will do soon. You can download the, the book, Solving Problems with the Visual Analytics. This picture comes from here. That will give you a very quick understanding of, of the story. <clears throat> okay, let's have a very quick understanding of the problem involved with the issue. I go for some example, very, very provocative example. Okay, let's go for visualization. We have Excel. Please do not use these terrible three-dimensional bars. They're occluding, confusing, make no sense. Uh, get rid, getting rid from 3D bars in Excel is very, is very heavy. You have to select the, the right, otherwise we will get this. It is maybe very funny, but not useful. And don't use complex metaphor. 
here there is the idea, this is from user to days, from, I mean, a, a magazine in USA that here is breaking a, a, a pencil to give the proportion between uh, age in people. Why using this part of the pencil to give the proportion? It is fun, but it's not useful. And this is uh, somehow propedetic to the story of a uh, number visualization. Here I, I am showing how many numbers are here? Six, seven, seven, eight numbers. Here we have two numbers. It's a, it's a, a, it's a breakdown into, into in, in different classes. Or you, you can have some cognition problem, language problem hmm, around. Uh, this is a timetable of a Japanese timetable. It's not uh, very simple to make a decision here. And uh, this is the Atlanta flight traffic on the airport. And again, we have a problem of uh, collision, overloading, uh, uh, cluttering, uh, or, or whatever. And this is very, a very little part of the traffic, uh, air traffic on uh, Atlanta. Don't use complex metaphor. Mm -hmm. This image is intended to, to give the and use the perception of the breakdown of the electricity consumption in house for cooling, uh, heating, uh, cooking. Uh, and they have this nice picture around, but I mean, with figures inside, maybe they are nice from the point of view of drawing, but it's not the differentiation that I mean. And uh, you need to understand other stuff. Perceptual issue, cognitive issue. I was used to I was used to do my classes with the, using a laser pointer, and uh, it was green. And he appeared on the skin so so strong that people in the class asked me to please don't use don't use that laser anymore. You are disturbing my eyes. And I ask you, why a green laser? is so stronger, it's stronger than the red laser. Maybe you have seen it around. I am not with me. I like the green laser for, for the night for the stars, but trust me, if you don't know it, it is perceived really much, much stronger than, 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 than the red laser. Why? I have a big battery inside, more power, Opinion, ideas? It's up to us. This is the, the curve of sensibility of human eyes to the colors. There is a peak of sensitivity in the green area. Human eyes are more than 100 times sensible to green than to red or dark blue. So if you use the, on the same screen, green and red, with the same physical intensity, human beings will perceive the green much, much, much stronger than red. And if you are using the core for encoding a number, you, will, you are lying. The same value, no, you perceive the green higher. And the, why human beings are so sensible to green? Do you have an opinion? The curve or the distribution of the sunlight frequency is exactly the same. The sun is spreading colors, not with the same power. The sunlight has a peak on the green. I will show you the synthetic curve that has been developed by an organization modeling the sensitivity of human eyes is a, a sort of Gaussian like this. And the isoreposit to the distribution of the light of the sun, they're exactly the same. Our eyes adapted along the time to exactly to the light that is available outside. This is good. And also this is the same reason why the, 
the leaf of the of the tree are green they absorb more energy if they if they were blue like a science fiction movie you get you will get one one part of, of what of 100 of, of the power not efficient and this is important because you, when you design a system you have to take care of this and uh, the eyes are very good for uh, recognizing pattern. You can scan the image, recognize pattern. Rem you can remember image much more than you can imagine. I, I will show you some example of that. And you can uh, use different uh, visual or graphical elements to compare. You can use the length of a line, you can use the shape, you can use the orientation, you can use a texture. Which one is better? If I want to compare two numbers, it's better to use the texture, the orientation, or the length of a line. Oh, the length is much better. There is a clear understanding of, on which visual feature to use for representing number. There is a, a, in a hierarchy. Position is better than length. Length is better than area, blah, 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 blah. Uh, that has been assessed several times. I will show you. You must use them. If you have only one variable, the best way is put it on the plane, the position, X and Y. You can easily compare. If you have five variables, you need other solution. I will show that later. Uh, animation is a good idea for pricing the attention on change. I will show in the next classes how you can be fooled by some uh, wrong perception. There are some protective features like color. You can use them, you should use them to uh, help users to distinguish things. But there are some limitations still uh, embedded in uh, our eyes. How many colors you can easily distinguish? A very few number, six, eight, 12 is a, a real not reachable ma maximum. Here we are talking about distinguishing. Hmm? And uh, if I want to distinguish it in a classroom uh, uh, with dots, uh, uh, women from men, I will use uh, luckily red and blue, yeah? not pink and blue. Even if in the in the in the collective thinking, pink is uh, for women and blue is for men, because the distance in our eyes is less. If you have to distinguish between two, it is easy. If you can re go very quickly till six, I will show why and how. Going more is not possible. Distinguishing more than 12 colors is quite impossible. So you have to select the color in a careful way. So you need to understand how human beings perceive the light. And we have a other problem. You, in this moment, not really true because the, the screen is not very good. Maybe people at home has the problem. I am stressing your eyes because I have red and blue on the same screen. Red and blue are on the extreme of the color scale. And there is an effect that is called the chromatic aberration due to the fact that the refraction of the light depends on its wavelength. So the refraction of the red, the refraction of the blue are different. You cannot focus at the same time blue and red. In this moment, if you look to the screen of, of the computer, your eyes are shifting from focusing to red, blue, red, blue, red, blue, red, blue. Very quickly, you'll be really uh, bored from them. Hmm? And uh, that's why the 
optici opticians use the test maybe you that did that of red and blue for for for, for, for uh, looking for for uh, your your quality of highs that means please do not use on the same visualization red and blue together otherwise the user will ne ne never post that and chromatic aberration means that when you use a, a camera red and blue will be separated and we will have some alone some, some imprecision on the border because blue and red will be uh, projected in different the same source containing root the blue and red will be plotted in different position here for us is a problem of having a, a lot of visual effort to focus it visualization is not enough interaction is not a plus it's mandatory you have to include it and uh, we have a problem with the data complexity that can be off for managing the a lot of attributes and you need the solution this is parallel coordinates for instance i will show you in uh, other classes here we are dealing with about 20 attributes hmm? this is a scatter plot maybe you recognize it of course is the parts of story this is all the calculation that uh, me and Rico Bertini did for assessing the quality of the image to, for studying the the better uh, a better way of uh, handling the the mapping of the color with the final goal to provide uh, something from year to year making visible what is uh, overcrowded but this means that we have a complexity around and the user task don't forget what uh, the user is doing i say that now when you will do your exam you will present the system and i will ask you every time who is the intended user of the system what is the task that you are trying to support i don't want that you show me clicking here it, I see this and this. What is the task of the user? I am a, a, a box officer manager that, that, that want to optimize the box office. Mm -hmm. I want to, to understand the distribution of the parts. I want to discover if there is a flight that is very long, it is very cheap. The user of the system with the task of the user. And uh, also the skill of the user must be considered. Remember, there is a learning time. Visualizations are not simple. It's not user friendly. It's not at all. You amplify cognition, I do agree. But sometimes to amplify the cognition, you need a lot of effort to learn the visualization. My favorite example is the cockpit of a plane. You have saw some picture of that. All that information allows to to fly in a safe way how long it takes to learn all that information the meaning the consequence the relationship also just what to see i will show you some system for handling the vulnerabilities of a network it's not easy to to use it takes one day to be familiar with the system but but after that you can you can manage thousand of vulnerabilities on thousand nodes so take your time to learn and to explain the visualization and uh, this is a side part that i will not discuss in the in the, these classes but evaluating a system is not really when you present a solution is this better than this yes no how when and why you need you need to involve the, the user sometimes you can get some errors like this i say oh you are wrong because you are using together red and blue eh, blah blah but if both visualizations are safe from these errors they use different paradig paradigm of visualization different interaction which one is better 
is a problem. And there are, I started a long, long time ago a sequence of workshop with the Catherine Pressan. Uh, well, it's a long story about how to evaluate different visualization solutions. And uh, remember the two classes. Do you know the answer? Do you, do you know the story? Yes. I am presenting, educating, communicating. You don't know the answer? You are aiding exploring the data or uh, you are solving problems, you are planning. And this is a night thinking to reason. The two branch. And the last but not least, uh, you are not to reinvent everything from scratch. There are a lot of solutions around. The story of the visualization is enough clear. You have the data, upset data, you go for uh, uh, represent it, uh, are you presenting it? This is uh, all the language, filtering, rendering, but this is represent and present to the user. And you can have some solution like the 3 gs that provide you a quick means to speed up the story. So don't invent the wheel and use a well, well-known framework. Uh, there is, we will use D3 in these classes. There is Vega. I don't think that we are going to use Vega is too much for you, but there are some solutions, declarative languages. So don't reinvent the wheel and go for something that already exists. 